Hey y'all, and welcome to today's episode of uh, Haskelling the Admin of Code. We're going to be doing day 10 today. I haven't looked at it yet, so I don't know how much of an issue it will be, but I'm hoping it won't be too bad because as I've said before, I'm, uh, I'm leaving tomorrow for home for Christmas. I'm going to be wearing a mask on a train to Stockholm and then I'll take a plane back to Iceland. I'll be wearing a mask the whole way. I got one of those face shields that they wear. My uh, virologist contacted my girlfriend. She hooked me up with some sweet, sweet face shields for the trip. And uh, I'll be tested when I get there. And I'll be tested again five days later. So, yeah. So hopefully it will be good. Uh, so, I won't be back tomorrow. I'm going to take... So, I'll be traveling tomorrow. And then I'll be traveling again on the Saturday. But I'm hoping I'll be back on the Sunday. And then we will do day 13. And, uh, we'll do day 13, but then we'll do like a marathon. Finish day 11 and day 12. So, you won't be missing out, but, uh, it's going to be a long stream. Well, maybe it'll be a short stream. Maybe Friday and Saturday are just super easy. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, let's get started with today's stream. Uh, we got today's Moomin Cup. It's the same Blizzard Cup as before. I... This is my new favorite cup. I got it for Christmas and I got a, I got a matching spoon. Like this is a Moomin spoon. I really like Moomin stuff. So nice. Hmm. Alright, let's check out today's problem. Uh, let's see. Advent of code. Oh, this is day 8. Day 10 of the Admit of Code. Let's see. Um, oh yeah, and uh, we got our first two subscribers yesterday, so thanks a lot. <laughs> really means a lot to me. You know, I'm just here to chat with you guys and gals. And um, I really just enjoy programming, you know? But it's fun that that you can I can kind of... I can't, you know, I can't support myself, but... I can get a little extra funds uh, because, yeah, I spent a lot on the whole setup, mostly for doing proper talks, but yeah, you know, you got to spend money on what gives you joy, right? All right, let's look at today's problem. Adapter array. Okay, the weather forecast. Hey, you're too cheap. I hope I'm not offending you by saying your name. Uh, oh yeah, we got an emoji now. Are you ready? Are you ready for the... Oh no, we haven't... It is, it's not up yet. Oh, damn it. Twitch has to like... Manually review all the emojis. Otherwise I might send like a, an appropriate emoji. But it's a good emoji. It's gonna be it's gonna be lit. Okay. Alright, so adapter rate patched into the aircraft state of your address where the forecast of a massive tropical storm. Before you can figure out whether it will impact your vacation plans, however, your device suddenly turns off. Oh shit. This is a stormy trip for Santa. He's not doing too well actually. Uh oh, Timmy. Timmy. I like Timmy. Keeps me honest, you know? He's like, uh, I mean, Timmy's a good programmer. Uh, so, if he is worried about part two, it's gonna be something. Let's see. You need a plug There's only one problem. The charging outlet major C3 is the wrong number. Jolts. It's kind of like volts, except it's jolly. 
I'm guessing. Uh, always prepared. You make a list of all the Joltage adapters in your bag. Yeah, I also have a bunch of adapters. Not Joltage, but like... They can plug into whatever. Each of your Joltage adapters is rated for a specific output Joltage, your puzzle input. Any given adapter can take input 1 or... Take an input 1, 2 or 3 Jolts. Lower than its rating and still produce its rated output Joltage. So it's gonna be a range from the Joltage to Joltage minus 3. In addition, your JVS has a built-in Joltage adapter rated for 3 Jolts higher than the highest rated adapter in your bag. If your adapter list were 3, 9, and 6, your device built-in adapter would be rated for 12. Okay. What language is this? Uh, we're going to be programming in Haskell. But we haven't started yet, so... The empty language? Any theoretical CS people out there got that joke? Super funny. Uh, what's up? Reaction CS. What is the problem? What is the trouble? We can't help you unless you let us know, you know? Uh, if you use every adapter in your bag at once, what is the distribution of joltage differences between the charging outlet the adapters on your device? Your adapters with the following joltage ratings. With these adapters, your device's built-in joltage adapter would be rated for 19 plus 3. So that's the maximum. Because the adapters can only connect to a source 1 to 3 joules lower than its rating, in order to use every adapter, you'd have to choose them like this. The charging outlet has an effective rating of 0 joules, so the only adapters... Okay, does it always have 0 joules, the rating? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the only adapters that could connect to it directly, we would... You would need to have... Joltage rating 1, 2, or 3 joules. I think the only one you have is an adapter where you one jolt. From your one jolt adapter, the only choice is your four jolt rated adapter. From the four, you can have five, six, or seven. However, in order to skip any adapters, you have to pick the adapter rated five volt jolts. And then we need to pick this number one as six, and then the seven. Then we can go from seven to ten. Ten, eleven, and twelve. Choose eleven, and then ten, twelve, yeah, yeah. After 16, the only valid adapter has a rating of 15. Then 16. Uh, getting a message. After 12, only valid adapter has a rating of 15. Yeah. Then 16. Then 19. And your device is built in adapter, so it's 3 higher than the highest adapter. So its rating is 22 jolts. Okay, so we just need to arrange them. We always want to use all of them. Hmm. So here's a larger example. In this simple a chain that uses all the adapters, there are 22 differences of 1 jolt and 10 differences of 3 jolts. Four, find a chain that uses all of your adapters to connect the charging outlet to your device's built-in adapter and count the joltage difference between the charging outlet and the adapters in your device. What is the number of one jolt differences multiplied by the number of three jolt differences? All right, let's find it out. A reaction you still haven't told what your trouble is. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Touch the 10.hs. To me, can I just ask, how long did this take you? We need to make a new directory. Day 10, mm, touch day 10 dot hs, and then touch test small, touch test big. And then let's open day 10 dot hs. Uh, it's gonna be module main where. We're going to get the input going to be a file path to io int get in 
put first part easy peasy second part took more than an hour oh shit well that's just how it's gonna be we're gonna map read at read io no we're gonna read at we're gonna read int over read file we're gonna fmap read int over read file and the we need to take the lines first yeah we need type applications we want to do this I just always write read like with an explicit type because I always want to know what I'm doing. And I think type application will be in default Haskell in 20 and in the GHC 2020 version. So let's see, get input test small printed. Let's open test small. Uh, I think we already copied it. Yes, and has the big. Insert it. Uh, okay. So there's two. So, okay. So there's, there's a couple of ways to do this, right? But what we're essentially doing is we have a graph. And that graph is connected see what I mean so you know it's so we start at zero and then we have the input right one two three four okay so you know zero is going to be connected to all like it's gonna be connected to one uh, zero is going to be connected to Three and it's going to be connected to. Uh, how do I do a reverse slash? I don't know. Let's see. Oh shit! You all saw that, right? Let's close it. Why do you prefer Haskell? Uh, I worked on it for like five years now it's kind of my language of choice and it's fast but it's a uh, it's right at the point where you have the most type information with the least amount of effort because it infers so much that's why I like it let's see so, and then, so what we're going to do is we're going to build the graph and then we're going to just find, find a path in the graph that visits all of them. So I haven't used OCaml so much. Um, I think I've used Reason ML a little bit, which is like, it's like OCaml with like a slightly different syntax and you can compile it very easily to JavaScript and that is okay. but. One of the things I like about Haskell is that uh, you limit I.O. You can only do I.O. Uh, every now and then. Tyrion Lannister? How is that? I don't, I don't get it. What is Tyrion Lannister here? Anyway, let's see. Uh, so, Ciro is going to be connected to... One, two, three. Uh, and then, you know, so zero is connected to one, two, three. One is connected to, uh, uh, okay. So, in fact, you need a jolt rating one, two, three. Oh, at least you only have one that is a raptor in one jolt. What? Oh, yeah, this is a small one. I was looking at the big one. Yeah, okay, so we have. One, so we go from zero to one. We go to one to four, right? So we want to find a a path that visits every node 
in the graph exactly once and uh, there are uh, there are no cycles because uh, it's a directed graph and it's going to be if we're going to build it in such a way i mean so it's a directed graph and you can only go from a lower one to a higher one not the opposite direction so it's like the traveling salesman problem except in a non-cyclic graph what is it called a hamiltonian path uh is it's each vertex exactly once uh, uh, yeah and we are trying to find a Hamiltonian path in our graph uh, so if a Hamiltonian path exists whose endpoints are adjacent the presenting graph cycle is called a Hamiltonian cycle Okay, so data dot graph Haskell. So let, we're just gonna do it like properly. We can import data dot graph. Um, and here we have the path. And uh, okay, we can't just call. Um, we can't just call um, what am I saying? So we, we have the we have the we have the list, right? And we can only go from a lower one to a higher one, right? So we we can just sort it, right? Let's see. Uh let's close it. Let's say Let's first sort it. Core data dot list. I think I think like a graph thing is we're complicating it too much. Because we can only go from a lower to higher. Oh data. Uh, time date and so it's 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16, 19. We have to use all of them exactly once. And they, because they can only, yeah, so we have to use all of them. So we have to use them in order, right? Uh, that's it, right? I think we're complicating it too much. Uh, so we have the sort. And then we just find the differences between each. Uh, how do we... How do we do that? Um, so we want to find the difference between one element and then the next element. So it goes 1 to 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 11, 12. Okay. I guess it starts at... Let's just do it, right? Uh, diffs. Can I just... I can just like shift it by 1 and then... And then do, yeah, so I'll do that. So get input. Okay, so sol1, that's gonna take in a list of ints and it's gonna list return as an int. So sol1 of the input, that is going to be, so we have two lists and we want for each element in the list, uh, we want to do sol prime, we're gonna do imp and tail of imp so one imp is going to be uh so uh this is a head of i 
is and then it's going to be uh t t s okay so saw one if either one of them is empty we're just going to return zero uh no we're gonna we're gonna return an empty list actually we're gonna turn turn a list we're gonna turn a list of the differences so saw one so the second one will run out first it's gonna be equal yeah that is true to me that's actually that's actually very good uh let's see sip with. we can actually do sip with even faster saw one uh so let's just do sip with minus the tail of in and imp so what is so we do sort so first we sort uh so and okay let me do saw one let me just say where s equals sort imp Let's do it here, and we do here. Okay, so we don't have to sort here, and so, okay. So three, one, 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 three, one, one, three, one, one. Okay, and then we do uh, sort again. And then we do group, which is, I think, What is a complaint here? Uh, right. So, okay. Okay, let's just sort this first. So let's just see what happens. So, 11133. Okay, and then we do... So, there's going to be a list, a list of things. If we group it, let me do group. So we get the ones, and then we will just return uh, So, okay, now we, we've grouped it And now we want to turn it into a map So we are going to say MP equals This is gonna take a no okay let's just so we're gonna return a list of pairs so this is gonna be a 2p f is going to take in a list of uh, x and x is Lee. okay and this is going to be just x and whatever and we're going to say f of Lee is going to be we're going to count the number ones and we're going to count the number so the number axis and then the length of Lee. so we're gonna we're gonna do map f over this um gonna let him turn us a list of pairs okay uh so i because i'm thinking that we will let me see so what happens if we run it on the on the bigger input we have 21 and so it's always one or three have I ever met Simon Peyton Jones? Yes. Met him a couple of times. He is a very nice guy. And we worked work together a bit on uh, the type tall stuff. 
And that's, I think that's one of the best parts of the Haskell community, is like these legend people. Wow, yeah, thanks Lenny. I also have a, a nice t-shirt on I got for Christmas. Uh, I won't show it too much because I, I think some of it might be copyrighted. But yeah, so the one of the things with the Haskell community is that the like the legends in it, like Simon Payton, John Hughes, Phil Wadler, like all the names behind Haskell that you go on, like John Lunchbury, like if you go on the Wikipedia page, like and then you meet those guys, and they're really really nice people. I think that's why the Haskell community is like it's considered a very nice community. It's like because the like the main drivers of it are these super nice people. So, you know, I really recommend the Haskell community. Okay, now let's say, uh, let's say, uh, let's say, uh, let's just say that this is going to be an int. So we're just going to take the second of these pairs. So it's because it's, it's always going to be ones and threes. All right, no, let's not do that. Let's say it's going to be a map with ints to int. And then we say map dot from from list because I'm kind of sure that we're going to cons look at something else than than just uh, ones and threes later so we have here from list one and six okay and then we just say the map is going to be this from list and we're going to say map of one we're going to look up look up the one here map of one times mp map dot of three now this is wrong because ah i always mess these up, up. Is it like this? Oh no, yeah, okay, it was correct. I didn't mess it up, it's just because this is gonna return in. So for the first one, it says 24 and then 189. Uh, seven differences of one volt jolt and five differences of three jolts. What? But we got six and four. Oh, we ha so we have to count the first one. We have to count the second one. So what we will do is that we will take the input. We will add the zero to the beginning because the charging thing is always going to be zero. Wow, I have so much spam. And you're like, they're always spamming the same message. I wonder why Twitch... Shouldn't Twitch be better at filtering these out? But, you know, I got active chatters, so... Okay. Okay, so it's going to be sort, and then it's going to be... Uh, we are going to have to add the maximum... No, so it's always going to be so it's going to be zero at the beginning, but then it says that it says that uh, it said here that uh, the built uh, their device the built-in jolt adapter rate for three jolts higher than the highest rate adapter in your bag. So it's always just going to be one higher. Gift me a sub! Wow. Uh, so we're just gonna say here uh, MP prime equals uh, map dot modify with key right we'll go with modify map dot modify data dot map I think there's like a we can modify how do I change uh, one key? Let's see. Oh, 
update at update the element at index i by its zero based index in the sequence order by getting the indices out of range zero based indexed in the map uh what's that does that even make sense update man update mix adjust yeah so we're gonna say adjust and then we're gonna say plus one for the key three in map so i need to are gonna be map one and map three So this is seven times five, and this is 22 times 10. Okay, so I think we got the first one. Let's check the input. This is the old input. We're gonna do new file input here. Okay, and see, we're running it in two milliseconds. So, I mean, for the tests, that, that's maybe not so Cool. Input, let's see. 2240. Doesn't seem too bad. What if we don't, what if we just print out the map? What happens then? Okay. We also got just these two. Let's see. 2240. That's what we got, right? 2240. Let's see. All right. We got part one. But it was easy peasy, as Timmy said. But Tim is interested in part two. How will I do part two? I think that's where I have to do the graph stuff. Uh, but let's see. F U N. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Every arrangement, you'll need to figure out how many different ways they can be arranged. Um, every arrangement needs to connect the charging outlet to your device. Previous rules about when adapters can successfully connect still apply. First example above supports the following arrangements. Zero, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we can connect those, yeah. Uh, has many arrangements. Okay. There must be more than a trillion wallet ways to arrange them. Surely it must be an efficient ways to count the arrangements. What did I tell you? We're going to build a graph. And then we're going to count the number of paths. Starting from zero. To the end. How do we do that? That is that is fun. Uh, but let's see. So we always have to go from zero to the first one. No, we don't have to do that, right? Because we could. We so here. Let's see. See, we can't start with three, right? Now let's just let's just build. I think building a graph. That's not too bad, right? Okay, so we take our input and we're going to be using data.graph. A graph from edges. Build a graph from a list of nodes uniquely identified by keys with a list of. Uh, Let's see. Do, 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 do. Build a graph from a list of edges uniquely identified by, by keys. With a list of keys of nodes, this should have the edges too. So the nodes are just going to be... We're not going to use the nodes. 
so they got the keys and it's gonna be from key to a list of keys here we're gonna use Haskell's standard library right it's gonna be powerful let's see so let's fix all one Sol two. Okay, uh, so the graph from edges. Um, so zero connects to zero one two three. Right. So safely uses AP matrix straight lights out at first. No, the out list may contain keys that don't correspond to nodes at the graph. They are ignored. So... I think we don't actually say... We could just always say... Plus one, plus two, plus three... I think we can just say that all the time, right? So let's see. Graph from edges. Let's see. Uh, import data doc graph. Import qualified data doc graph as graph. Sol two. Okay, so we're gonna say here. Well, this is just not give it a type yet. So salt two is gonna give us. Just, we can take in the input. It's gonna be a list of ints. Uh, salt two. Okay. So the uh, the didn't know about data dot graph, Timmy. You gotta know containers because they have the stuff you need, right? But yeah, if you sp yeah, I know if you spend an hour building graphs that is not a long time to spend building graphs in Haskell so I applaud you sir so uh, G's they best respect my G's as the poet once said what uh, they say I'm from the projects best respect my G's I think that's how it goes so we're gonna have units as the nodes when the exponential time algorithm hits am i gonna click click this so i know borders from twitter i think he won't post anything too bad oh shit. <laughs> yep see how much i trust you borders that could have been anything that link i'm very easy to uh fish apparently and we're gonna do i two i plus three, right? Over. So let's find so m max input max i equals maximum of the input. So of the input. Let's just call this input. Jeez, we're not that lazy. So the maximum of the input, and we're gonna map this over the input. We're gonna add. Uh, we're gonna add. We're gonna add maxi plus three, and we're gonna add zero to the input. Uh, so let's just say here graph from data so it's gonna be graph dot graph from edges of the g's um yeah let's uh let's check it out right let's just see what happens here okay a uh, uh, so g v uh, was it oh what oh Let's, I want to have the type here. I can click this. We'll put the type. So we need graphs, we know it, and we need vertex. It's a bit annoying that uh, 
that uh, what am I saying it's a bit annoying that GT ID doesn't realize this it's not it's not the greatest with scope oh what yeah like this and then this should be vertex right yeah like this okay uh, we don't need these because we know these are hints. Let's uh, let's look at what happens if we say uh, G V A I uh, of get input of the test small into uh so yeah we're gonna we're just gonna read the input twice it's fine it's all to mapped over this can we print the graph we have zero one two three two three four five four goes to c See how cool this is. Zero. Oops, wait. Get input test small. A uh, print. So we have. Let's print the sort of this. So we seem to have keys here that don't exist oh no so i doesn't go to itself i goes to i plus one so zero goes to zero and zero goes to one one goes to two two, two goes to three four five but uh, three four five is not in the input so let's say here uh input set is going to be set dot from list of the input import data dot set set import qualified data dot set as set uh, so the input set here and then we're going to filter this with oops Set dot member input set. Okay, uh, like this. And now we're actually going to say here that this is going to be find max of the input set because it's going to be, otherwise, we're repeating some work. So we have zero goes to one, one goes to two. I don't like uh, I don't I don't like that this graph here has an edge for like up to 12. I like where is the 19? What is going on here? So we we are uh, hmm. Does anyone know what's going on here? We should go to 6 too, but I don't see it exactly. I mean, 19 is not in this list. Right? And that should definitely be in the list. Uh, but, okay, maybe this list... Uh, let's, let's, let's see here. Let's look at it. Let's see. Let's, let's print G and let's print a V of, of 19, right? Is index 19 out of range? Let me... Let me... Debug dot... Let me... Trace... Show it... Because oh, this is suspicious, right? Something wrong with datadoc... Uh, something wrong with the way we're calling datadoc graph. 
So, okay, the input it's taking in, it's definitely our input. Maybe this list is wrong. Our graph from edges. So, build a graph from a list of nodes, uniquely identified keys. With a list of keys, nodes in this should have edges too. Yeah. Okay, so... Let's let's trace show it GS. I mean our input list looks okay, right? But then the Okay, graph is a raw array based adjacency list for the graph. Note from vertex returns a node associated with a given zero based index into vertex. Vertex from key returns the int vertex for the key if it exists in the graph, nothing otherwise. So I have here 19 goes to nothing uh okay yeah so the input set is wrong also that should be maximum of the input this trace show id this should be This is just input prime. And then this should be input prime. And now it's complaining about input set because yeah, so we just want to say input prime here. I think this might be something adjusted. So okay, 22 goes to nothing. Okay, but 19 goes to 22 at least. And then zero goes to one. Yeah. Pencil 22 is a target vertex. So 19 and that for 22 is max plus three. Wait, but we, uh, 22 is a target vertex, yeah? Exactly. So now 19 ends up at 22. That was just like, it was just missing. But like, I'm wondering, so this, so this is here is 11, right? So this is zero goes to one. Let's, so that's the one goes to here, right? This four, so zero goes to one, one goes to four, four goes to four, five, six, but it's just that these are like adjusted. Uh, so I, I, I think I just need to use the, let's, let's, let's make the nodes be the keys here. So I think that's the issue. So it's, Oh, okay, so, you know, so this is the, oops, I didn't, so this is the, this is the node for zero, this is a node for one, this is a node for two. I am, this is very confusing. So this is a list of the, so 22 goes to nothing, zero goes to one. 16 goes to 19. Now, this returns, oh, graph node from vertex and vertex from key. Oh my God. So this is graph node from vertex. So node vertex. So this vertex of 19 that should give us just 11 okay and then just 11 gives us this one right now let's see note from vertex okay so let just uh, n let just v equals vertex of 19 and then we're gonna print the neurotics of 19, and we're gonna print node v. 
yeah and then we get the node so 19 19 goes to 22 okay now now we have the graph we actually have a graph which is good okay now we need to find hamiltonian paths in this graph no not hamiltonian paths we need to count we have to count the number of paths from 0 to 22 from from like the start to the end well, let's just do it more efficiently let's say here start equals 0 end equals this is going to be the end the maximum of the input plus 3 so we and we add start and we add end here that's the input prime okay now count the number of paths from a spanning forest of the part of the graph reachable from the listed vertices how do we count the number of paths from hmm so but we only say with total number distinct ways you can arrange the adapters. Yeah. So I guess it's going to be uh, it's going to be paths from the first node in the graph to so times the number of paths from every possible next node in the graph. Uh, that's it, right? I don't. I don't think I even need this graph thing here. Um, I don't, I don't even think I need to build the graph, right? I think we just need this GS that we built. And we're just going to, we're just going to sort it. Let's just, So we have the GS here, right? So it's going to be, you know, zero times the length of one. And then, you know, from one, all the paths from one to the end. So it's going to be, you know, so let's see. Spanning forest is a part of the graph reachable from the listed vertices. Spanning forest. Can I just do... We have the graph. Print graph.dfs that's going to be a list of, of forests. This is a list of trees. Graph.dfx of of the graph and the vertex zero. We 
We're just gonna use from just. We don't. We don't care. Let me see. So this is a list of spanning trees starting from what's the links? Yeah. So it's gonna be one, yeah, and so it's gonna be just one tree, right? So that starts at zero. Wait, I can. There's a. There's some tough couple of stuff in forest I can use. Uh, data tree. Data dot tree has goal. They also have like there's like a way to make it. Print it nicely. Draw tree. Draw forest. Import data dot tree. We're not gonna use it directly. We're just gonna say qualified as tree. Qualified. Print a uh, puts puts tree and then draw tree dot draw forest. tree of strings to strings so I can just map over the tree right Ugh. can I just <laughs> I can just not use integers right if I just just for this part I just want to see the tree that's coming out of here now is that forest string actual type forest vertex is that just a return here of it's gonna be a forest the vertices yeah okay we can't print it let's not let's not go down this path dangers dragons lie ahead right in this path this goes to zero to one one two 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 to three three to four Four to five, five to six, six to seven, six to seven to eight, eight to nine, eight, nine to ten, ten to eleven, eleven to twelve. Okay, uh, that didn't help. Yeah, I think there's no, I mean, I think we, I think it's way too difficult if we're going to be doing, like, we don't have to implement a graph algorithm. We can just, we can just iterate over it, right? So let's see. Uh, so we have the graph. Okay, uh, let's see. This is all to get graph. It's all to graph. Um so here we're gonna say so we are going to take in the graph and we we need the functions too, right? 
Okay, let's let's just let's just keep working with the salt in here. Uh, let's see. So I have the I have the graph node vertex, right? So let's just write that. So this is going to be v to n, and this is going to be v to t, right? That's what these are. Graph from edges vertex to node and k to v equals the graph to graph dot graph from edges of uh gs this is gonna be res res now okay so how does the algorithm go so i want to start at zero so let's write the solve to prime that's going to take in a i'm taking like the current one we're looking at okay i mean it's going to take in like this whole thing I G red. Uh, uh, graph, uh, graph build. I just graph. I just want to name this something else because I'm going to be taking in the same here. So it's going to take in a graph build. It's going to take the current one we're looking at. And it's going to return the number of paths from that one to 22. Hey, Beastnatch. Why not use DFS or DFF and count all paths through it? It's a DAG, so the tree is finite, right? Hmm. But you see here that we, we did the DFS. And there is just one path in it. Because it, it just kind of finds one of them. So and the length of the DFS was just one. So starting from zero, just so it didn't, it just finds a spanning tree, not all spanning trees. A spanning forest, right? Not all spanning forests, right? So if it, if it were all spanning forests, that would be fine. But, uh, but yeah, it's not, not that, right? I think that's the issue. Do you agree, Timmy? Oh my god. Okay. TV. Okay. Yeah, we need every possible DFS, right? Um, and that's not what the function gives us. That's the issue. I think that's the issue. So cur. We're just gonna go first here. Case a. a key of cur of. So if we so we have something, uh, if it's nothing, then we're just going to return zero. So I think I mean k of cur. That's going to be like a like if the if the key is in the graph, and we're because because of the way we built it, it's always going to be that way. Uh, we and I guess if we remove this, it's going to be it's going to be okay. Like we. So we, we're essentially doing this check. So we could just say it's always going to be this, but like, yeah. So let's let's try it later and like drop this condition. Okay, now uh, just n. So this is going to be a node of uh, the key, the key, and a out. Uh, so this is this is going to be a. a 
yeah so key from edges that's going to get return some maybe vertex uh key k to v so this is just going to be res we're not going to be it's going to say res okay now actually we're not going to be changing the graph so this is just going to be solid to prime so we're not going to be changing it So, this is what we have. so here we have the graph. So this is going to be k to v. So if we get a vertex, uh, so that's going to be you know a vertex, vert. Then we can say Let's see. We let's see what out degree gives us. Because I think we can just kind of multiply all the out degrees somehow. Let's just not give this a. So let's say. Let's just see what the array of the out degrees are. Uh, now we're just kind of exploring, right? The out degree of zero is one, zero, one, two, one, two, two, two three, three, two. Um, if I remove, remove the end from the input, uh, so let's look at the array. Uh, let's say Ellen's, let's say. We're using all the data structures right now. These are the elements. There's one zero in it. Where is that zero coming from? I removed uh, Max, right? Oh, all right, I'm removed. I removed the end here. Um, so I'm going to do something crazy right now. I'm going to do a product of the tail of the reverse it's 12 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 yeah no okay it's 8 that would have been something right but yeah uh, it's not that easy Um, what about the in degrees? Because I mean, so like there is some theorem about this, right? It would be like just multiply everything, but uh, I think, yeah, that's it. Would be would have been too easy if we could have just done that. So let's keep here. So k to v of cur nothing just vertex. And then we're going to say let so the key and the value. So we have the cur and outs equals uh, v to n 
of uh, of vert. In uh, so that's going to give us the outs. And now we're going to say maps all to prime on the outs. And then do the sum. Let's see, what, what does this do? It's gonna give zero. Mm, because that's a year. Because it sends to be one. No, nope, still zero. Let me see. Uh, well, I think we're missing like a base case somehow. Trace show ID of the outs. So one, okay, so zero goes to one, one goes to four, four goes to five, six, seven. Five goes to six and seven, six goes to seven. Uh, this is going to be length outs plus some of the rest, right? That gives 57. That's too much, right? That is too much. Hmm. Oh, thanks, Hinta Super. Yeah. Let's see. Essentially, you know, so the number of paths from 0 to 22 is the number of paths from 0 to 1 and then the number of paths from 1 to 22, right? And the number of paths from, so because they all end up at 22, right? Uh, let me, let's, uh, Yeah, this essentially never happens. Let's, uh, let's look at the current one, right? So, it starts off with zero, then zero goes to one, then one goes to four, four goes to five, six, seven. So I start with five, five can go to six and seven. Six can go to seven, seven can go to 10. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is what you kind of have to do here. Let's see. What do I want? I want Sol to to count. To count a uh, the 
shouldn't this, shouldn't this be? Because like, you know, because it, it says 57, right? And the total should be eight. Um, I think, I think I'm going to have to say length out. Out. So the thing is that this is going to end up with being... So let's just say here if... Okay, so... Case out of... this I mean this is how I want it to be but uh, it's not how it is here we got eight but this isn't this the same as we were writing before So I did length outs times. Oh, I should have just have been doing some. But that gave us zero, right? Yeah, that gives us zero. Oh, okay. I think it's just because we want the empty list to map to one. Okay, I think that's it, right? So, so if there's no out, then we are then it's only one path. We only add one. Otherwise, it's going to be the sum for mapping the solution to outs. Oops. Works for the small input. Let's see. Uh, yeah, okay, it's actually it's like this. And it works for the big input, right? So it works for us. It was just the fact that we were we were not mapping the empty list to one. Okay. So why would it not be one? Because the sum of the zero is going to be zero. And then if all of it is zero, then it's going to be... Yeah, the sum is always going to be zero. So we kind of need the base case that it has to end in one. Okay. Nice. What are we going to just do this? No. No. Because when you got nowhere left to go, you're at the end, and that's a path. Yeah, yeah, that is true. The only node where it, that has nowhere to go to is the path, is the end. I'm just wondering here, like, so here we say k to v of cur of, um, and I thought like that, because, yeah, 
I guess we add too many things here. I thought like if we... Oh, okay. So here we have the outs list. And the thing is that we always add the outs list. And then... So here we have the... Because this, this will like give the end three paths, right? Because we're like depending on that are in fact being a path here. Okay, uh, but this is quite fast, right? Oh, 19 milliseconds. Boom. We don't need to sort this. Um... What can we do better here? It's gonna be a sum. I don't think we can do much better here, actually. I think we are going to be actually in this case. Uh, it's always gonna be... Like, I don't think we can like memoize this. Okay, but let's see. Let's see for the input. Um, let's first get uh, from to me. How, how, how fast was it for your input? Oh, this is. You run yours first. Okay. That is way slower than we've been doing usually, right? So it took Oof. Can I get an F in chat for how long this is taking? You see if this wasn't a live stream, I could just go and get more coffee or something but now I just have to sit here and wait and be like yeah let's see if it takes takes let's give it let's give two or three more seconds or a minute. Let's give it a minute or two. Uh, you're going to have to use some graph maths. Damn it, Timmy. Could have saved us a lot of trouble. Okay. Let's use some graph maths. Okay, let's look at it. Let's look at it. Um, so we have the graph from edges. And we can get the out degrees. And that's essentially it here, right? We're just getting all the out degrees. And then we want to get the out degrees of all the... Of all the other ones. Uh, okay, let's look up graph maths. Uh, counting paths in a tree. I just want like an algorithm. Um, let's see. A 
I was hoping that a graph library could count the paths in a more efficient way. Yeah, that would have been nice. But this is going to give us a lot of... Because here we're like, essentially, we're counting each path. Right? Let's see. I mean, it would have been very nice, like a recursive way of just saying, like looking at the out degrees. Um, and looking at in degrees. But you kind of have to trace all the paths, right? Let's see. Uh, let's see what we have here. A spanning forest of the graph obtained from a depth first search of the graph starting from each vertex in an unspecified order. So we can do topological sort. Hmm. We at least have the graph, right? In like a nice graph way. This is the worst part of Advent of Code, you know? When you're like, your initial thing doesn't work. And now you have to start thinking, okay, well, how would I, how would I do it then, right? see okay I'm just gonna cancel this it's never I mean it's been running for five minutes it's too much so this will always work uh, this will always work um, Okay. Let's see here. Let's see if we can gain some efficiency somewhere. Hmm. So we're just gonna because we're, we're only gonna be looking because we constructed the graph in such a way that. It's always going to be, it's always going to work. Let's actually, you know, let's see. Is it the counting thing that's, that's, that's screwing us up? Or is it like the actual construction of the graph? No, okay, the, the graph, the graph gets constructed pretty quickly. I mean, yeah, it's just doing stuff, right? Uh, just in so constructing the graph is no issue. It's just that we're kind of for each path counting the paths, right? Um, okay. So the issue here, so I think we, we, we can just memoize it. I think if we memoize, because we're going to be running into the same edges again and again and again, right? Let's see here. There's like a memoize. Uh, I think there's like literally a thing you can just do to just that just memoizes. Uh, Haskell memoize. 
because I because I, I think there's like a data dot function dot memo ways. Oh, but you have to import the memo ice package. Okay. We don't want that. So we are going to memoize it. How are we gonna memoize it? Well, we have a map of int to int. This map is gonna be lazy. That's better for memoization. Uh, import data dot map dot lazy. Lazy. Yeah, I think that's gonna work, right? Uh, so, memo of cur. So, okay, so how do we... So, for cur... So, okay, let's see. If we're encountering this cur for the first time, so... So case uh, cur and map dot memo of just val is going to return val nothing. So we've never encountered that one before. That's it. Yeah, because I don't I don't want to Oh sorry, we're confusing this a bit. If this is gonna be nothing Okay, so if we if we have it, then we then we we want to memoize it, right? Let's see, cur. Could might expect it. Okay, we're gonna be looking up cur in memo, right? we found it then it's gonna be there okay if we haven't found it then we have to fold it right let's see here uh, fold L What is the type of folder? I always forget which ones it is. So then we are going to take a fold L. We're going to say map.insert uh, Google, so insert. Uh, Data dot map insert. I say we're gonna insert something into the map because we want to like keep the same map again. So okay, so we're actually going to fold. Okay, so here this is going to be map of int to int. So, and then sol2 is going to start with map.empty. And then we are simply going to map.lookup0 in that. So, okay, memo of cur. So, if we already have cur in the map, so if a cur map dot member of memo then memo else if we, so if it's already there 
we can we don't have to update that value now if 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 it is an actual vertex so okay if it's not there we will just return memo again right but this doesn't happen so we don't really have to consider what happens right so the outs is going to be a list of the vertex going out from that one uh, so if case of outs of if the outs is an empty list then we will return memo map dot insert uh no so it's map dot insert we're going to insert the cur with one the rest are going to be hmm I think I'm doing something something weird here Let's see. Um, do I want to like for each of the outs, like inserts, check check if it's there and insert? Hmm. I don't think I should do it this way. I think I should do it this way. Then memo memo map dot banker. If it's if we haven't computed it before, uh, this should be. I think we need to return both the integer and the map int int. So then we read if it's already there, and we just return the pair if we haven't then we have to kind of compute it for so if it is just outs then we just say case outs of so it's going to be one comma map dot insert cur one if it's if it's something else then we have to fold over the current one fold l um so this is going to be some function our initial so we're gonna we're gonna fold with the it's gonna be memo comma zero and it's going to be over the list of outs Uh, what's wrong here? Map, uh, okay, it's just... So, so, uh, where f? f is gonna take in, you know, the current memoize function and the current sum. Cur sum. I think, isn't it just going to say, so it's going to say salt to prime. And what's wrong with memo here? Um, oh, right. This is supposed to be the int. Let's actually have it like this. And uh, let's have this be, right? 
curry when you go this direction, right? Oh, what's it? curry? Okay, what is this? Uncurry takes a map of into vint of a map of into into map of vint. No, uh, that's gonna be F. Okay, where F is a type map int comma a map int 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 to an int to a map of int comma int. Uh, f equals something, right? And this is gonna be a map of int int. So I don't like. Why is it saying this? I'm not. This is supposed. This one here is supposed to be an int, right? And it's complaining. So this is okay. This is gonna be a memo. And then this is gonna be the rest. Okay. And then map dot insert. Oh, and I need to supply the memo. Right. What is it complaining about? Let me compile it because I, I can't really tell what the error message is here. Uh, right, it's the same thing again. So fold L is going to simply take uh, the current memo. It's going to take the current sum. It's going to take an uh, out, and it's going to say it's just going to be a, uh, where um, it's going to be m prime comma uh, out out val. Uh, it's going to be sol to prime of memo and out and this is going to be m prime comma cur sum plus out val and then that, then at this point we have updated all the out so let uh, m prime comma res in and then i want to say map dot insert cur res uh, cur res m prime you think this memoization will work? I think it. I think it should work. Let's look at. Uh, let's look at what we have so far. Okay, we have to start it out with something proper. Sol to uh, map empty and what? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wrapped up empty. This will just be the second of sol to prime of map dot empty and zero. Okay, it's much faster for our test inputs. Like before, this was taking nine, twelve milliseconds. That's it. Boom. That's memoization for you. 
this is called dynamic programming, right? Memoization is just dynamic programming. Uh, so functional version of dynamic programming is memoization. Let's see if we got it. All right, anyone's correct. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Oof, I was scared there for a second. So, if you have a function that runs, doesn't run fast enough, just memoize it. Especially like here, this was, uh, it was always calculating the same outs, right? So, so what we essentially did is that, you know, when we were collect, you know, when we were calculating this graph, right? It was, it was checking this entire thing, right? Uh, so now we kind of just memoize. So every time it was going to ask about this, these three things, it just looks it up instead of calculating it, right? So it goes way faster. Like way, way, way faster because you can just actually look up things instead of instead of calculating them directly. Uh, yeah, so we memoized stuff. Let's uh, let's see. There's another way. What's the way, Timmy? Tell us. Graph math, right? Timmy is typing up his extremely cool solution to this problem. But I like this, right? There's this like, you know, we can't just brute force it anyway, anymore. We have to, if we're going to be brute forcing at least memoize our brute force solution. Do you know that way to me? You're... I think we can actually... We can remove this case here now. Because the fold L will... Fold L will work. Let me see. But it's like we changed it from a... We changed it from a zero though, so it might not work, right? Yeah, it doesn't work it doesn't return the same values so this would return the re correct one for uh... Uh, okay we have to check for the empty list Timmy do you just like have a Like a GitHub repository we could check out with your with your way. Now, now I want to see what the graph math checks out to be, right? Look at the prime factors of the answers to the two test input. Look at the prime factors of the answers to the two test inputs. Hmm. 
Why does this work? I do not know. Okay, let's wait. Let me. I want to make this bigger for you all. Look at the prime factors, the answers to the test inputs. Then look at the jolt deltas between the sorted adapters. In the deltas, the number of consecutive ones map to a factor of the cons of the correct answer. Okay, so if we change saw one here, let's not multiply. Let's return this. Uh, so we had seven, seven ones, and then we had five threes. Let me fix the chat again. This is not, not the best. Uh, exactly. Why does it work? One, one, one goes to one, one goes to two, one, one, one goes to four. Look at the output of the SIP with. Oh, the jolt deltas, I see. Ratio id. So, we want to sort those first. Uh, consecutive ones to a factor. Okay. Because you have to go to one from one to three. I guess it's because maybe that's like, because uh, it feels like it shouldn't work. I see. So uh, the thing is, so for all of these ones, right? You have exactly one path. But then for all of these threes, you have three possible paths. Is that maybe it? I feel like it's a. Uh, I feel like it's kind of based on the fact that you will only have a delta of one or a delta of three, and you'll never have a delta of two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That is true. That is cool. That is a much smarter solution to me. Yeah, yeah, except, I mean, that's the problem, right? Because, like, the, the he, it, so, I mean, okay. It's a problem in the sense that, the, I mean, it's never stated that there are one or, it's only one or two or three jolts, right? It could be two jolts. And that it's never stated, right? I mean, we could always, you know, look at our input and then we know that it's only going to be one and threes. Uh, but I feel like, I feel like that's, uh, I feel like, yeah. So like, you know, this way, I mean, it's slower, but it will always work no matter what the deltas are. And, uh, and this will even, like, this works, you know, so, like, if we change the graph here, this is just going to be the number of different paths, right, from, from uh, the beginning to the end. 
you know, of like a of like a triangle of like a dag, right? If, there's, if it has one beginning and then all of them end at one point, this is always going to work, right? So it's a bit more general. But we actually have to do a lot more work. But because we memoize it, it's fine. Let me see. This was a lazy map. Let's stop trace showing it. Uh, and in the lazy map, we're essentially saying, you know, input the res here. And the res is going to be the result of this thing. So... Uh, it doesn't... Um, how do I profile again? Let's look at some, let's see if we can profile it, see what it turns out to be. Like where the main, what the main time is spent on doing. Alright. It's, we spend a lot of time doing F. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, right? It's a salt to... It's gonna be, so this is gonna be inherited time. Let me, I need to zoom out a bit here. So main takes all of our problem, all of our time. We get input takes. Okay, this is allocation. So inherited, yeah. Um, why is get input inheriting taking all of the time? Is it because because it's kind of that's what triggers it all? I don't know. Anyway, it seemed uh, seems pretty quick. It seems like like. Most of the time is just spent on reading the file. And then after we memoized it, it just works great. Okay, uh, I'm going to cut it short now. Because I have to start packing for tomorrow. Uh, thanks for the session. I think we... We learned a lot about memoization and how good memoization can actually get you. Um, it can actually make things super fast. I'm just gonna, gonna. Uh, thanks, Timmy. Maybe we'll do like a Reykjavik functional programming meetup sometime over Christmas, if uh, if that's even legal might not be right input set uh yeah i'm just gonna go ahead and commit this uh get this get add day nine no day 10 but hs we're gonna add we're gonna add the test big test small and our input get oh it's not shell script, it is Haskell. Git status, git diff. What did I change in day nine? Oh, I removed a comment. Great. AM uh, day 10. Git push. All right, yeah, like I said, I won't be coming back uh, tomorrow or Saturday, but I'll be back on Sunday. Five o'clock UTC. It's at six o'clock Central European time. That's going to be about uh, noon. Um, US New York time. So, you know, you want to wake up, have a nice 
something to watch with your uh, brunch on Sunday morning that uh, you can watch. And thanks again for tuning in. And uh, thanks again to me for, you know, giving us some perspective on the solutions, right? I like the, I like the multiplication solution. It's cool, but it's like, because, yeah, I'm not quite sure how it works. Like, I agree with your explanation, but it's just, I would have to like look at it, stare at, stare at it for a while to understand it. Anyway, yeah, thanks again. And uh, see you all on Sunday. Bye-bye.